Okay, so I found this interesting article about changing views about how Germans are changing their views of their economy in response to their changing economic performance. So this is an article from the Financial Times, and I thought I'd read it. Germany is falling out of love with economic orthodoxy. Growing numbers of policymakers and voters back increased investment at home. Many instinctively see Germany as a fear less market-driven economy than, say, the US or UK, and they are partly right. The German state redistributes more than the British one, and far more than the US one. But Germany has also been the driving force behind the dominant economic orthodoxy in Europe over the past 20 years. Balanced budgets, deep-seated skepticism about the role of the state in the economy, and a strong focus on export competitiveness. Is this now changing? And what could it mean for Germany and Europe as a whole? For decades, Germany has built up its economy on exports and on making sure its industry is competitive so that they can keep costs down so that they can increase their exports, as well as making sure their budgets are balanced so they don't have debt troubles because the Germans love building balanced budgets. Outsiders have long expressed frustration at the apparently strong consensus in Germany over economic policymaking. For the best part of 20 years, there has been little to separate the Christian Democrats and Social Democrats. For successive U.S. governments, Germany has been seen as a significant cause of global imbalances through its unsustainably high export surplus. For many Europeans, Germany's obsession with fiscal probity and trade competitiveness has hindered attempts to confront the challenges facing the Eurozone. Because Germany exports so much more than imports, it sucks a lot of money out of other countries, and so it doesn't help other economies. And if Germany isn't importing that and spending so much, it's not doing much to boost the economies elsewhere in Europe. And so that as a whole is perceived to be causing problems for them. And so far this model has worked for Germany, but recently it's been having problems because their economy has been not doing as well. The signs are now multiplying that changes could be afoot, not least because the country's economic prospects have worsened sharply. The global slowdown is hitting demand for German exports, while years of fiscal constraints have lowered economic potential. The country's infrastructure and skills base urgently needs upgrading. Last week, Germany's leading business lobby, the BDI, together with the Trade Union Federation, issued a joint call for a 500 billion public investment package. The hereto robust orthodox consensus among the country's Council of Economic Experts, an academic body that advises German policymakers, is crumbling. And there is even a new readiness to acknowledge the risk of the country's export dependence. But the real reason the change could be a new offering is that Germans themselves appear to have had enough. So what's happening is Germany's bad economy finally reaching the German people? Let's see what they have to say. A large new poll of German attitudes to government and the economy commissioned by Forum for a New Economy threw up some striking results, suggesting that a large majority could support a much less German economic policy agenda. The survey revealed overwhelming support for more public spending, including a surprising degree of support for this to be financed through debt. Four-fifths of those surveyed believe that business has too much influence over government policy. A similar proportion think privatization has gone too far. Little more than a third believe that Germany's market economy is pursuing socially just outcomes, and 80% want the state to provide greater protection for those affected by globalization or a change. What this suggests is that Germany is far from immune to the problems we see in the US and UK, where large numbers of people have lost trust in those countries' systems. In Germany's case, this has led to a surge of support for the populist right-wing alternative for Germany and struggling regions, contributing to the worsening crisis of the two main political parties. At 15% of the polls, the SPD appears to have little to lose, 
And there does indeed seem to be an increasing willingness within the party to question this consensus. The CDU has doggedly clung to its mantra of whatever is best for business is best for the economy as a whole, but now even influential figures close to the party are starting to entertain doubts. But perhaps the determining factor will be what happens to the economy. Germany has formidable strengths, but now faces mounting challenges. The factors that underpinned its heavily export-dependent e recovery from the crisis, strong growth in China, booming global demand for cars and investment goods, German companies specialize in, has gone into reverse, helping to explain why industrial production is down 5% in a year. Yes, their economy has been entirely dependent on the exports, and now global demand for German export goods has plunged, just hammering their economy. And also, China is now moving up the value chain and producing the same high-end goods Germany produces with their much lower labor cost. So in the long run, there really doesn't seem to be a future for German exports. And since the slowdown in demand for German exports is already hammering their economy, well, their economic model that's worked for the past 10 years doesn't look like it's going to work for coming 10 years. I've made several videos about this already and talked about it a lot before. So if you've been watching my other stuff before now, then yeah, you've already heard me say this a lot. Output in the crucial automotive sector declined by 12% in the first half of this year. And this is contributing to a growing sense that the country needs policies focused on boosting domestic consumption and investment. Could this all be good news for Europe? Weak global trade and persistent trade tensions will emphasize the importance of a healthy European economy to Germany. This could persuade the country to end its opposition to reforms, such as more risk sharing and a major common budget needed to improve the Eurozone's economic force. And yeah, good luck with that. Germans are not going to agree to a transfer union, and they're not going to agree to a common European budget. They may change their domestic economic policy because it is in their perceived own interest, but they're not going to do anything that sends German money outside of Germany's borders. That's not going to happen. Trying to discern a shift away from Germany's economic orthodoxy can sometimes feel like waiting for Gadot. I don't understand the reference. But the country's economic policy has undergone profound shifts before, such as the embrace, almost 40 years ago, of market liberalism in a small state ideology. We could be on the cusp of another paradigm shift. The writer is the co-founder of a form of a new economy. His co-author, Thomas Freak, is the former director. Well, according to this, it seems like Germany's poor economic performance is finally getting to the German people, and it's causing them to reevaluate economic policies and how they want to change how their economy is run going into the future. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what concrete actions in government economic policies actually change in the future, and what different parties how this changes Germany's electoral outcomes, and therefore what subsequent policies, different mixes of political parties pursue in the future. You know what? I thought it would be fun to read the comments on this article, so I'm adding that to the video. So here's one comment. And deciding to needlessly raise their cost of energy a cost that flows through every product and serves in their economy for social reasons goes unchecked. Welcome to the controlled future. Okay. Okay, so this is a more comprehensive comment. The Stability and Growth Pact itself is a deflationary and not one of the major causes for falling inflation negative rates. 
the solution is a mandatory call for countries with twin surpluses to run budget deficits in excess of a nominal GDP growth for a couple of years at the earliest till the eurozone core inflation comfortably at the ECB target of 2%. So he's basically just saying what they were saying in the article, only more detailed and specific. The journalist Thomas Frieke, I hope I got that right, is writing his usual stuff here because even the left people in Germany who read their Spingle can't stand it anymore. Just read the comments, for example, in this German article that's in German, so I wouldn't be able to understand it even if I did click on it. He was chief economist for the Financial Times Deutschland, which faltered in 2012 because the nonsense was unreadable or unbearable. The German government now spends the surplus money getting in and still keeping to the financial target debt reduction in good times. Okay, the German policy has not been Keynesianism because they've been running surpluses during What do you mean by unsustainably high export surplus? Relative to what and whom? Does the US have unsustainably high import surplus? Interesting. This is just stuff about renewable energy. I'm not reading that. It seems so obvious. Raise wages to increase spending and improve your economy. At the same time, tackling inequality and populism and rebalancing the Eurozone through higher imports slash lower exports. Invest in your infrastructure to improve your economy and raise productivity, invest in innovation to improve future productivity. Globalists always thought trade was the answer. They seem to think everyone could do better by running a trade surplus, but for every trade surplus there has to be a corresponding trade deficit elsewhere. One person's exports or someone else's imports. Keynes understood this after World War II and realized surplus nations were just as much of a problem as deficit nations. A global economy with a long-term future needed balanced trade. If trade is balanced, no one gets any richer or poorer through trade. Anyway, Germany jumped on board today's conventional wisdom. Quote, Germany is turning to soft nationalism People on low incomes are voting against authority because the consensus on equality and justice is broken down. It is the same pattern across Europe, unquote, said Oscar Madley, a former bailout chief for the International Monetary Fund in Europe. Mr. Madley said the bottom half of German society has not seen any increase in real incomes in a generation. The Hartz reforms in 2003 and 2004 made it easier to fire workers, leading to wage compression as companies threaten to move plants into Eastern Europe. Though even if they couldn't fire workers, they would have refused to hire new workers and eventually consolidate their employees in a small number of factories and move the ones they closed down to Europe anyway. So I don't think labor liberalization made a difference in the possibility of relocating factories to different countries. So back to the comments. The reforms pushed 7 million people into part-time mini-jobs paying 400 a month. It led to corrosive pauperization. This remains the case even though the economy is humming and surging. Exports have pushed the current account surplus to 8.5% of GDP. Well, this gets back to another issue. For the longest period of time between the late 90s and very early 2010s, 
which is the recovery period after the crisis when Germany was growing strongly, wages in Germany remained flat even though the economy was growing. After 2013, wages did start to increase with the economy again, but for the past two years now, the economy hasn't been growing, so... Yeah. And that's been another issue the German economy has had. So anyway, back to this guy's comment. What could possibly go wrong? Their exports markets dried up. The German economy was only as strong as the economy of the nation's exports to. China was a big export market for Germany, and they are now in trouble. Germany needs a rethink. Yeah, I said what this last paragraph has been saying a lot in my previous videos for such a long time. Drawing the wrong conclusions. The protectionism of the 30s caused the global economy to seize up. I'll just say it. The economy was already a macroeconomic crisis from a banking collapse and contractionary monetary policy. This is a significant misrepresentation of what is going on in Germany. The German government runs the largest redistributive programs in the Western world. German taxation is higher than in any other major industrial country. And because of creep from aggressive taxes, the state quota of GDP has been steadily increasing since Merkel came into power. To further increase ineffective government spending through borrowing is the last thing the country needs. What it does need is a reform to its education system and retrenching government encroachment in the private sector. The FT is giving a largely unknown organization space to propagate its own misguided perceptions. Twenty years of economic orthodoxy, balanced budgets, less government. At what point did member states adhere to the growth and disability pact, which underpins the euro? There has never been an attempt at economic orthodoxy. Now that debt is utterly unsustainable levels, you start to see some reform, but thanks to the ECB, it was cut short. I'd really like to see economic orthodoxy tried instead of the central planning. People quickly forget why communism failed. While I agree that at times Germans have been too fiscally rigorous, I also think the last thing the world needs right now is another debt burden major economy. Hopefully, the Germans will exercise their usual self restraint and only borrow as much as they can reasonably pay back. Germany has probably realized that its government surplus ideology is pushing negative yields elsewhere in the Eurozone, especially its savers and pension funds, which is not sustainable for its banks either. When families and businesses are already piling up cash for savings, it is fiscally responsible to post government surpluses and hoping that exports alone will absorb the excess cash. It is falling out of love with its orthodoxy because the vast majority of ordinary Germanys have a lot to lose by applying it.